What is up down and sideways, you beautiful individuals? We have returned. It's League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties for another weekend recap. LCS in the full swing of things, although the two-week break means they are demoted to the LCS storage closet for the weekend. I don't like what's going on with that <laughs> one. I will I will give credit over. I think the broadcast and the rest of the teams, everything going on for the broadcast, managed the situation as best as they could. Certainly not the best upgrade we were looking for, at least, heading out of the break. And shout out to Zazel for calling it out a little bit. You know, his first win <laughs> playing in the storage closet, but they're not Valorant pros, so that's where you get to sit. And it feels like, you know... League of Legends for Riot is kind of the first child they had. And then the second one comes and you're like, oh, wow. Oh, so cute. We'll give them all the shiny things you're forgotten about now. Hey, but the LCS, I, I, we knew that this was happening when we heard about the way the scheduling was going to work out, the situation about sharing it. That's one of those ones where, yes, not necessarily happy. We got to share it. Managing the situation and how the broadcast was, I think the LCS deserves the credit of, of doing the best they could. Actual on Rift product, I say Cloud9 is back. And I say that with a question mark because FlyQuest game, great. Come in, dominate with Nidalee Renekton of all combos against the top team in the league and look fantastic. But you're getting minus points for that performance against Team Liquid because it seemed like both squads just did not want to win this game. It's one of those statements, Cloud9 is back, and you're having it start with that exclamation point because you're hyped about that take tackle takedown against FlyQuest and how they did it, as you mentioned, with the composition. And you roll in to this Team Liquid debacle. That was the match that closed out the Sunday because, yes, you're right, it was hot potato. Who's going to take this game? Who's going to throw it harder? And in the end of the day, Cloud9 is the one that comes away with it, but there is no chance either of these teams are satisfied with the performance. It's painful when you see a team just dance around Baron, try and force it, it doesn't happen, and then 20 seconds later they just come back and flip it again anyways and then almost lose the game from it. It's one of those ones where it's extra frustrating because you see not only the inept action at the first part around the Baron, but then that doubling down on that, wait a minute, no, 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 that was, let's go for it type of thing. And it's like, that was not the call, guys. That was not the situation. Team Liquid extra pain this weekend going 0-2 and, and specifically in this extra matchup against Cloud9, where one, you don't expect to have the avenues to get the upset, but they present themselves to you and then you fumble those opportunities and you still come out. 2 I'm calling it the 3 week from Team Liquid, and now even more questions regarding the mid laner APA. Ah, yeah, that teleport, absolutely abysmal. Really, you just feel bad for Impact in this last game because he bodied that top lane matchup, and I mean, that's a game that Fudge types top diff at the end because he got completely smashed by Impact. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's just the way that that plays out for it, and it's certainly one, I think, want to see a little bit better from moving track of cloud nine at the top of the table one of the things that we entered this year was one to see fudge able to dominate on a higher level this situation for team liquid with apa it's one we entered this year hoping to see more growth more development time understanding what we had and what the shortcomings were before i don't think we've seen almost any of that shored up or improved upon this year with this team liquid roster and as the time passes through this spring split and you start running out of it that's where the questions start to go. Well, are we going to even see this type of improvement this year? A 2-0 is a 2-0, though, for Cloud9 as they move uh, to 6-5 and five to start to get things back on track. FlyQuest bounced back in a big way after getting smacked by T1. They were the, or by C9, excuse me. They were the ones laying down the smackdown on 100 Thieves in that battle for first place. And even before the game started, in the middle of the draft, this is the best implementation they had. You had Bwipo and Sniper jawing at each other, talking a little trash. And unfortunately, it was a Sniper that ended up going, I think, 1 and 7 on the Renekton. A little bit of the, of the pain, but that's. That's the type of risk you take when you do that little bit of pregame trash talk. He looked like he like didn't want to trash talk, but they're like, what do you got, Sniper? I'm going to solo kill you, maybe. W welcome to LCS Productions, <laughs> General Sniper. We're trying to get anything out of you at any point in time. Was fun. Was a good matchup between these two. I think it was a good indication of what we have towards that upper end of the LCS with a squad like FlyQuest getting that bounce back, you know, re-showing 
they are going to be one of these top contenders after that loss to Cloud9, and you see 100 Thieves. Yes, you know, not necessarily that one-to-one, 50-50 type of matchup in this against FlyQuest, but enough that you see the signs of improvement, of growth for this team, and you start to think about where they can get to, what happens week to week for this team. I think you're going to be happy as 100 Thieves fans. And on the, again, the FlyQuest side of things, because Whippo, Olaf was great in that matchup. Jensen, the rejuvenated Jensen, goes deathless and has 100% kill participation on the Oriana. He had some clean ulties across the whole game. And that was what impressed me a lot, was that 100% kill participation, being there, being around for the team, being involved in a lot of these things for Jensen. Getting him in the mix like that is going to be interesting, seeing this FlyQuest team as we move on, as we challenge these top teams again in the LCS what you can do with a Jensen that is able to contribute like that, because that was the last factor. I think a lot of us were kind of maybe waiting on, maybe questioning about seeing the way that Whippo and Inspired have been able to play, how the bot lane has looked this early. Someone like Jensen being able to rise back up to that top level of mid lane contribution in the LCS, that stability, that would be a major factor for FlyQuest. And that was in a matchup against Quid, who was looking like one of the best mid laners in the LCS over the last couple of weeks. So makes it even a little bit more impressive. The coin flipping ways of NRG return to the rift. This matchup against um, Immortals, we got the vein top out of Dokla, which I'm going to say was less than impactful throughout the majority of this game. But NRG had absolutely zero business winning this match. First, it has this miraculous Baron steal out of contracts. All credit to him, but that can't happen. Yeah, I, you got to be looking at the other side and saying, Team Liquid, how are you letting this happen? Type of situation is the one when you look at that type of Baron Steel. Yes, props over to El Contracto, making sure, excuse me, that very valuable, crucial turning point uh, Baron goes the way of NRG to hold it on. It has been this such an up and down mixed bag from NRG that we have seen. There's been the slightest of glimpses that you see that they are the returning LCS Summer Champions and the team that made it the top eight at the world event. You've also seen the NRG that was nowhere near that type of accomplishment last year so far this split. It's where we find out that middle ground. Where does it solidify as we move towards these next couple weeks before playoffs? That is my biggest question for this NRG lineup. And at the very least, they're bringing entertainment to these games, even though it was a slow pace, 46 minutes uh, against Immortals. There was still plenty of action across the board. Palafox is looking good. Contracts already alluded to that Baron Seal. And who he... I mean, he was landing hooks left, right, and center this entire weekend, basically, and he has fit in pretty much seamlessly into this new uh, squad or new kind of old squad, some of these guys that he has played with before. But no question that NRG is still going to be an absolute huge threat when playoffs do roll around. Early on, still in 2024, it feels like the fiesta, the clownliness, the chaos that is the LCS, it's seeped over. It's gone global, Mark, because it has infested the LCK. If you removed the name tags from some of these moments in the KT versus D plus series, nobody in the right mind would be saying this is the LCK. I, I think I, we can even take it a step further. These would be even more minor region type of situations. You'd be looking at what we had out on the rift, a full on weekend fiesta between KT Rolster and, and D plus Kia. The game times in this one, the LCK, of course, we know we keep track of these things. 50 plus minutes for the wins. And I know that might not seem all that crazy because we've had a couple of, you know, 30 plus 40 ish type of territory ones in the LCS, but 50 plus for an LCK game between these two, that feels like an eternity. Yeah, I mean, the second game was the most in control for KT, uh, but they all they had a huge lead and almost ended up throwing it because D plus had a smolder that almost got them back in the game. But yeah, games one and three, I think it was like 51 and almost 55 minutes that they ended up needing. And it ends up being a clutch factor out of D plus. Honestly, they get a Wombo combo with the Rel and the Azir to kind of clean up game three. But in the most important game deciding team fight of the series, BDD, who's actually a pretty damn fed Tristana at this point, auto attacking over the wall, and then he rocket jumps into five people and then flashes into place to cancel that rocket jump. That, you don't see that happen often in the LCK. 
No, and I think it's been one of the problems that we have seen in this, what we'll call continued downward slide for KT Rollster after they hit the heights of beating Gen G. People started to get that attention around them. Cool down with the loss to Hanwha Life T1, and we continue down this trend as we keep going. The question is about BDD. That's the performer that I'm looking at the most with this team. Of course, there's been other issues. Other players have not been performing nearly as well. But looking for that bounce back, looking for that player to help carry you back out of it. And on that climb up, BDD has not been able to rise up to that challenge. And as you mentioned, having that type of power, having the items in your hands, in that, in that inventory, you had it in your hands and you didn't take that opportunity. And you look at what happened. D plus Kia. Lucid on that rel, he makes the big play happen, gets the player of the game, gets the series for D plus Kia. And that's great to see because Lucid, we haven't seen that hype that he had as a rookie. We haven't seen that level really be reached so far in spring. So seeing him have a big play like that was nice to see. But yeah, four losses in a row now for KT Rolster. Obviously, earlier in the week, Genji put the boot to their neck their face and got their revenge in a 2-0 fashion so back to the drawing board again after a heartbreaking loss uh to d plus the only team globally that seems able to close out games in a relatively quick and convincing fashion right now is t1 and it doesn't even matter if they've got a sub jungler coming in to do it it does not matter. Yes, you're reading that right. If you've been keeping track of the T1 Challenger scene, you might also be surprised to see Kuhan up and getting the call to join the big bros. Owner is out sick. Nothing all too serious. Just seems to kind of be a you know, regular cold, flu, winter type sickness event situation. Subbing him in. And you know what? He's giving the full on T1 treatment. Gets to roll on in with Viego while the rest of the four members of T1 help him set up for Reset City. Yeah, it looked like he was having a lot of fun. And it turns out, you know, no offense to Reckless and Poby, but you get to be matched up with uh, the A squad on T1 and things just go a little bit differently. All of a sudden, you're in comms and. Is my support calling for a pentakill on the Tom Kench? He wants to get the penta? What? Uh, and then you got another situation where you're, you know, you've got your top laner. He's, you're, you're like, oh, you're you're one v five. Let me get over there. Oh, you're one v five. You're fine. It's it's Zayus. Okay. <laughs> Didn't you watch Never World lost. Finals? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was a fun one for T1. I mean, a, a completely expected one given where Bro is in the standings and where T1 is. Good to see that T1 takes care of business and doesn't drop a, a slippery one where we have seen in the past for them. But you're right. And, only team globally that is going against the trend of all these extended game times, extended matches, T1 able to say, we're, we're, we got to wrap this one up. We got dinner to get to, guys. It, it honestly feels like they're playing on a different patch or a different meta than a lot of teams in the world right now. And, you know, that is one of those statements where you could fit it even further with how T1 expands the meta, but that's not been why these games are going so fast. It's just been the execution that T1 has had out there on the rift that communication, the synergy that they all have, the chemistry on T1 is picture perfect right now. It doesn't matter if you got to substitute one of these ingredients in or out type of as thing. As long as it's not Faker getting subbed out. <laughs> yeah, the, the, as long as it's not our, our unkillable Demon King. We talked about this one. Maybe it would have been what type of experiment it would have been if you brought up Poby instead and had him Faker into the jungle would have been maybe an extra wrinkle. Being careful. I mean, I'd love to see Faker's Lee Sin hit the rift. So, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe depending on, on how Owner is feeling this week. Uh, you know. Mas maybe he's going to play Master Yi this time and Kobe ah, is on the terror. The full redemption is. arc, he says. This time <laughs> I'm piloting that Master Yi in the jungle. But things business as usual, even if they're not doing spicy picks. It's another 2 0 4 T1. Couple of the big boys in the LPL hit the rift. Over the weekend and on the Monday, both uh, BLG and JDG picking up wins, but in very different fashions. BLG side first. It was a 2-0, but an incredibly competitive 2-0 against World Elite. And if you see anyone in the LCS complaining that Smolder is a weak pick or doesn't have a spot in pro play, watch Elk play it in these last two games. I, I think the smolders in the LCS are running on maybe a single AAA or, you know, what what are those batteries that you put in your watch type of thing? That seems to be the power supply that these guys got. The LPL's got them hooked right up to the whole power generator supply. They got the whole plant pushing out that power, especially some of these smolders. They hit that third, that fourth item. That damage is incredible that we have seen from these LPL players. The execution, it's different. Different world. We've seen... A sprinkling of some effective smolders around the LCS. 
maybe a little bit more as you dabble into some LCK. But the LPL right now is the king of the dragons, the way that it's going. Yeah, I mean, Elk, Jackie loved these guys. I see them, once they have 225 stacks and they have the execute and a couple of items, I'm just waiting for the Penta angle. And, you know, I, I think soon we're gonna start seeing them rack up because almost any game they get those items, you're almost guaranteed a triple kill. I'm waiting for it because in the LCS, you know, our, our smolders are calling for mom and it's like the lame Karen voice just going down on the rift and nothing's happening. The LPL's calling for mom and it is the full big, big elder dragon breath coming through. But maybe get a pentakill right there with the whole ultimate. That's what I, I want to see. I honestly think even the audio level on the ulti is too loud in the LPL. <laughs> like they've cranked it up just for that to hear that dragon the extra intimi roar. intimidation factor coming in. And like you're on a dark, soars, dark souls level that's trying to burn <laughs> you down uh, with this dragon. But it was still a 2-0 for BLG. JDG... They win the series. It took them three games against OMG, which is a middle-tier squad in the LPL. And that third game, they looked on pace for a vintage JDG closeout. It was a 9-0 start in kills. They had almost a 10K gold lead. And then all of a sudden, it's taken them 15 minutes after that to close out the game. It's not clean. They need to do a double TP into the base to end up closing things out. There's a reason this squad has the longest game time in the LPL. It is not the best of signs when you're looking through and, and a team like this JDG squad, one that has still kept themselves in that conversation of the top teams in the LPL and what they can do. That is the one stat that sticks out and does really come against you when you start looking about how you're going to stack up head to head against these other top level squads because you certainly are not going to be having that type of runway room, that type of leniency, and how you close out any advantages you're able to secure for this team. And I think a big part of that is you go to the changes that happened. Obviously, a player like Yagao, we talked about what, what differences he is, and it's not necessarily more so about Yagao. It's what a player like Knight is and what he represents and his ability on, on the rift and what he takes for himself. Even then, looking at Flandre up in the top side, I think outside of being on the Aatrox pick, we have not seen him necessarily have that top level lethality we want from these top laners in the LPL. He's done a more, a better than advertised job stepping in and, and you know, holding up what is going to be that weakness with 369 leaving, but he has not provided that lethality, that closing factor that 369 was able to add on top of what was already impressive about JDG. Yeah, he was a walking 3000 health meat bag on the Udyr in that third game just there to absorb abilities and some damage and sometimes unfortunately he was doing it in a 1v5 type of way but ruler is in peak form seeing him play on zaya the problem is i feel like there's going to be way too much on ruler's shoulders in this version of jdg that's the thing. I think we talked about this a little bit early in the year, waiting to see Ruler step into this type of form. Maybe, you know, it had slipped just past him being in that top player of the world type of category. I think he's right back to that type of level, what we are seeing from him individually. The question is now going to be about how long this can last, his form at this type of level, when things aren't operating as well as they were in the past with this JDG lineup last year, how he did have that little bit of extra support, a little bit of extra firepower to close things out, make things go right. It's all more or less on Ruler in this JDG situation. But truthfully, JDG, BLG, they're all irrelevant because the only way is the Milky Way. Fun plus Phoenix picking up another series win against Weibo, 2-0 fashion, Back-to-back -back kindred games for Mr. Milky Way. Back-to-back -back MVPs. He now has a league-leading nine MVPs in the LPL. That's nine out of 16 game wins for FPX that he's been named MVP. And, and I don't know how he manages to get this kindred again. That's the real thing that I, I'm wondering. Because not only heading into this one, it's, it's somewhat of a question that you're letting that pick over to him at this point. The comfort that he has shown, the lethality he's able to get out from this position. That's something that I've really liked seeing from this kindred. He has been fantastic as well. Always, the big margin that you're judging these kindreds on is the utilization of that alt. Whether you're utilizing it for yourself, for your teammates, all these right things. He styles on them on the Baron pit with it. Oh. Whether you're not screwing over your teammates, keeping an enemy alive in a situation like that, it has been pixel perfect from your man Milky Ways. He has been fantastic for FPX. FPX! 
rocketing out of the Dark Horse territory. They have been so good this past week and a half, two weeks, that I don't think we can even keep them in that Dark Horse territory. They are moving right up straight to the elites of the LPL. Yeah, they're just a horse in the race now. We're not even talking about them as a Dark Horse. Seven and three now. You combine that with the combo of NIP dropping another game to anyone's legend, who, by the way, also now are quietly sitting there at 7-3 and three after another pop-off from Hope and Croco. And now you got those three squads that I'm going to put in that right below the top three in the LPL knocking on the door. And this is your warning. The pot, it's bubbling over. The LPL is heating up for these playoff races. You're going to have all these squads with one or two star players that you know that you can grab onto. This is what the LPL is all about, seeing these teams rise up like this. Oh, yes, you better lock in for some LPL action, folks. But if, you, uh, if you're if you saying there's not enough young talent in the LPL, all you got to do is watch some of these uh, Milky Way matches. And I know people are already talking about this kid like, wow, where's he going to end up next year? Because he's potentially still under contract with RNG. You know, they're not going to let him leave or stay on FPX. But I, let my man finish the split he's in first before we're talking about that. It's it's somewhat somewhat fair because the way that he is playing, it's become an immediate conversation thing because now the way that he is playing, it is almost impossible for RNG to say we want to pass up on having him with us type of situation. And then, as you mentioned, though, you do have enjoying staying in the moment. And for a player like Milky Ways, don't get ahead of yourself. It's got to be the big thing right now. Stay in that moment. Stay focused with the rest of your teammates and keep this train rolling. And, I mean, FPX as a whole, they seem to be having a whole lot of fun. He's not thinking about the RNG contract. I know it's not a great historical precedent that RNG have put together in terms of contract jailing even the most famous players in the history of their organization. But for now, just enjoy the show. Enjoy the ride of Milky Way absolutely styling on everybody in the LPL. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beautiful people, as always. Thanks so much for hanging out, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.